Hi right, guys, this would be my fourth Tesla coil video. Uh, in the last one, I left off with a bunch of plastic parts and now it's coming together nicely. Um, PVC. I uh, used the same trick to hide the wire inside the tube as I did at the top. Uh, so through the bottom, I have the earth wire running. And here's what I've got so far that's together as a structure. I've got an option of using two different size toroids. This is the larger of the two toroids that I'm trying to tune the secondary for and two together, that might be a bit hopeful. And here you can see where I've let out the earth wire from the secondary uh, and it'll flow through to a standoff underneath. And the same for the bottom of the primary coil, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, the bottom turn gets led through uh, to the base where there's another metal standoff. And my struts so far uh, are basically a little comb. And if you turn the same shape upside down, all the ribs are offset by two millimeters to turn a coil. And I've also changed the solvent that I'm planning to use, which can glue PVC to acrylic. My DC relay has arrived. Uh, it's made in China and I have done some testing. Here the switch side of the relay is connected in series with two 6.3 volt incandescent bulbs that should draw a bit of current and a 12 volt battery. On the trigger side, a 9 volt battery uh, will uh, turn the relay on, of course, which is how I think it's intended to be used. But if I connect the negatives together across both sides of the relay, I can switch high current with a low current. And here I'm switching with uh, an LED in series with a resistor. 10 billion thingy bobs. Yes, 10 billion, and I think that'll complete my collection. Uh, or at least I've got enough. Uh, all the Tesla coils on here are the uh, Colorado Springs Lab Tesla coil. And here it is again. This is a watermark you wouldn't normally see in photos. It's the same image as uh, printed on the note. I've upgraded my capacitor bank now, 3000 PF, uh, to try and match the secondary to the larger toroid. It's time to bring out the RF signal generator that I got from recycling for $10. And this is a state that I got it in one or two years ago. It was full of dirt. Um, it worked when, it, uh, when I replaced one valve and removed some death caps. Uh, so here I've got the signal generator connected to the bottom of the secondary and an antenna connected to a scope to find uh, the resonant frequency of the secondary with the primary in place and top load attached. And you'll see that it's around 700 kilohertz. The primary LC circuit in place, uh, including the capacitors, I measured 653 kilohertz, which should be higher if I use less turns of the coil. When the coil assembly is together properly, it'll be easy to change the capacitor array, but it'll be much more difficult to make changes to the coil. The last thing I did for this experiment, not so much to improve performance, but so that I could make less noise, was to uh, encapsulate the spark gap in PVC. Even though in the end it's temporary, I've made this enclosed spark gap a little nicer and adjustable still. I made this hardware a little while back. It's a uh, telephone ringer uh, to make the bell ring at the correct timing. The timing you see on the incandescent light bulb uh, has an adjustable speed. Better still, the unit has a second 555 to chop up that output signal again, add anything up to an audio frequency. So you end up with a strobing signal that you can see visually, and then that can be pulsed at an audio frequency that can't be seen visually. But I'm doing it slow here to give you an idea. Originally the faster frequency was to pulse a transformer to ring the phone's bell 
and the slower visual frequency there was to provide the timing for the ringing. Back to the coil, uh, the Taurus top load is attached with a hexagonal spacer. Um, so I've gone and spent way too much time uh, cutting out a couple of cylindrical collars uh, with copper and aluminium tubing that I had laying around. Um, I got them accurate within a millimetre, spent way too much time. They just sleeve over the spacer because I did say I was going to make this thing nice. This video has been shot and narrated over a couple of days so uh, you won't see the most recent improvements when the uh, coil has been driven off a plain DC load so I'll just show the modulation for this video and uh, save the performance for the next video.